So today in this tutorial we are going to talk about class 8 science NCRT textbook chapter number 1 crop production and management. Half of the chapter I have already covered which I have uploaded in my channel. You can check that in the playlist of class 8 science that that was part 1 of this chapter in which we have covered few of the topics. Now we are going to the, cover the rest of the topics in part 2 of the video. So let's get started with the with the chapter. So today we have to start from the topic sowing. So what is the meaning of sowing? Uh, I think many of you have seen uh, that when farmers used to gr grow the crops in their farmland, first of all they used to start with the uh, with the sowing of the seeds. That process is called sowing. Sowing is a very important part of crop production. Without this uh, step, one cannot grow any crop, right? Because seed is the main main foundation for growing the crop without seeds we cannot get any crop so before sowing what uh, what the farmers they have to do they have to se select the good quality of seeds healthy seeds so that the crop variety so that the crops which they will get after harvesting are uh, that they will get in good yield the crops will be of very high quality good quality so pra so most of the farmers or every farmers they used to prefer the seeds which are of good quality, healthy as well as high yield. High yield means the production will be good, right? So now we are talking about the traditional tools. Means from past centuries, from the past years, which tools were used for growing the crops in agriculture? The tools traditional, the tools used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel. So for sowing seeds, which type of tools traditionally people used to do? It The shape of that uh, tool was like a funnel. The seeds are filled in the funnel, then passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. These ends purse into the soil and place seeds there. The funnel is like this. The shape of the funnel is like this. In that funnel, they used to fill the seeds and through that pipelines through pipelines different different uh, compartments are there through it this through which the seeds will go into the soil and each seeds will take its place like this the farmers used to grow seeds now the next part is seed drill so what is the seed drill as you can see in this picture seed drill look like looks like this so what is seed drill? Nowadays seed drill is used for sowing with the help of tractors. Earlier people used that funnel system but nowadays tractors are used for growing the for growing the, for sowing the seeds. So this sows the seeds uniformly at equal, equal distance and depth. So what is the benefit of the seed drill? That the seeds which will be grown in the farmlands uh, will be placed at equal distance and at the same depth. It is not like that that one seed is grown over there and one seed is grown over there. You By using the seed drill, the distance between each and every seeds are equal and the depth is also same. It ensures that, that the seed covered by the soil after sowing. This protects the seeds from being eaten by birds. Right? The depth will also be equal and if we will use the seeds the chances are very less that the birds will eat the seeds. So we can go get a crop from that seed. Sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor. So what is what this is one of the this was one of the benefit that uh, if we grow the seeds, if we sow the seeds using a seed drill, then birds will eat birds will not eat those seeds. The second benefit is that uh, time and labor will be saved. Means it will it will take very less time and very less people will be engaged in this activity. Appropriate distance between the seed is necessary to avoid overcrowding of plants. Yes, this is also one of the factor that the distance between the seeds should be perfect so that overcrowding should not be there between the plants. The plants will get enough sunlight, nutrient and water if they are placed at uh, some equal distances. At times, at times, few plants may have to be removed to prevent overcrowding. Yes, sometimes it happens that this is a small piece of land and this piece of land, lots of crops are there. So what will happen? The crops will not get proper nutrient, proper water as well as the sunlight. So what people used to do, they take out few crops from the land so that few crops will get sunlight. So initially if the farmers will take care that the seeds grown in that farmland should be should be placed at equal distance so that overcrowding should not be there then that will be a benefit for them now let's go to the next topic of this lesson that is 
adding manures and fertilizers so as uh, we all know that manures and fertilizer what is the function of manures and fertilizers they promote the growth of the plant and they give us good yield if we use manures and fertilizers in our farmlands so what are manures and fertilizers the substances which are added to soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manures and fertilizers so this is a definition of manures and fertilizer if the if in the exam it will be asked what are manures and fertilizers you can write the same definition definition the substances which are added to the soil so what are manures and fertilizers these substances we used to add in the soil in the form of what in the form of nutrients and why we use this uh, for manures and fertilizers for the healthy growth of plant so this is the definition of manures and fertilizers the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manures and fertilizers continuous cultivation of crops makes the soil poor in nutrients yes what happen if the farmers will keep on growing the crop keep on growing the crop one after the other then what will happen all the nutrients in that soil will be lost the plants will take all the nutrients therefore farmers add nutrients to manure and fertilizer to the field to replenish the nutrients of the soil this process is called manuring so adding of manure in the soil is called manuring improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants if the if the soil will not be rich in proper nutrient if the farmer will not will, will not if the farmer will not add manure in that soil what will happen the plants will become weak they will not get proper nutrients from the soil manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plants and animal waste so how manures are prepared when the plants and animals will die they will decompose they will get decomposed by the microorganisms and they will mixed up with the soil the so that those the substances which we make from the dead and decaying plants and animals waste that is called manure so it is a organic substance farmer dump plants and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose the decomposition is caused by some microorganism the decomposed matter is used as organic material so what farmers used to do they used to make a pit in that they used to collect all the dead plants and animals and after some time what will happen the microorganisms they will break these waste products into small small pieces and after that after few days you we can see that these waste products are changed into manures which the farmers they can add easily in their farmlands for the healthy growth of the plants so manures are not made from chemicals so they will not create any pollution in the environment now on the other hand fertilizers are chemicals they are made from chemicals which are rich in particular nutrients but fertilizers are produced in the factories they are man made they are made from the chemicals and they are produced in the factories so they create lot of pollution soil pollution water pollution as well some examples of fertilizers are urea urea is one of the best fertilizer ammonium sulfate super phosphate potash npk nitrogen phosphorus and potassium what is the, what is this npk n for nitrogen p for phosphorus p for phosphorus and for k potassium we have so these are the some of the fertilizers which farmers use in their crop plants but excessive use of fertilizers made the soil less fertile and it can it can uh, become a source of water pollution because when the rain water will come they will wash off the soil along with the fertilizers and those fertilizers will reach to the water bodies and create water pollution over there Another method of replenishing the soil with nutrient is through crop rotation. This can be done using by growing different crops alternatively. Yes, it is also one of the method by which we can replenish the nutrients of the soil. Suppose in a one season the farmer has grown one crop, and the next season the par farmer has grown another crop. Then what will happen? The nutrient of the soil will be replenished if we crop rotation process will be done. Rhizobium bacteria present in the root nodules of leguminous plant they fix atmospheric nitrogen leguminous plant like pulses etc in their roots rhizobium bacteria are present so what is the function of those rhizobium bacteria they fix the atmospheric nitrogen in our air 78% nitrogen is present but that nitrogen the plants cannot use up directly so what rhizobium bacteria will do they will convert the nitrogen into in the form of nitrates and nitrites and that will be used by the plants for the healthy growth
Now we will discuss the differences between fertilizers and manures. This is one of the most important question which can be asked in your exam. So write the differences between fertilizers and manures. So, for, so you will make two columns for that. One for fertilizer and one for manure. It is given in your NCRT textbook. So fertilizer is a man-made inorganic soil. It means fertilizers are ma made by humans from the inorganic soils, from the chemicals. But manures are natural substances obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung and plant residues. How many are are prepared by the decomposition of plant and animal waste right fertilizers are prepared in the factories and manures can be prepared in the fields also fertilizers do not provide any humus to the soil yes fertilizers will not give any humus to the soil but manures provide lot of humus to the soil so what is the meaning of this humus humus is the organic substance which are rich of nutrient which provide very good nutrient to the soil fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen phosphorus and potassium in fertilizers these nutrients are present but in manures uh, manures are relatively less rich in plant nutrients in manures the nutrients are very less uh, now what we can talk about is that one more point we can add over there fertilizers create water pollution and soil pollution but on the other hand manures will not create any soil pollution or water pollution they are not responsible for soil pollution or water pollution now we are going to read about the advantages of manures the organic manure is considered better than fertilizer this is because now what are the advantages of manures in comparison to fertilizer the first one it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil if the farmers will add manures in the soil what will happen water holding capacity of the soil will be enhanced it will increase it is it it makes the soil porous due to which the exchange of gases becomes easily. Yes, if manures are added in the soil, what will happen? The soil will become porous, loose, so that exchange of gases can easily take place between in the soil. It increases the number of friendly microbes. See, lots of microbes are present in the soil. So if my, uh, manures will be added in the soil, the number of microbes will also increase, which increase the nutrient, of, they will decompose the organic matter and thus increase the humus or the nutrient content of the soil. It improves the texture of the soil. The texture or the quality of the soil is also become will also become good because of the manures and fertilizers. Now the next topic which we are going to read is irrigation. This is one of the most important part of your uh, agriculture irrigation means providing water to the crops right the supply of water to crops at regular interval is called irrigation this is the definition of irrigation the supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation the time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop yes that, that this is also one of the important factor many crops are there which need lots of water like for example rice paddy they need lots of lots of water but on the other hand if we talk about wheat wheat plants needs less water soil to soil and season to season suppose someone has grown some crop in the summer season so those crop definitely they will need more water but the crops which are grown in the winter season they need less water water is essential because germination of seed does not take place under dry condition yes suppose you can do this small activity in your house take a small pot and in that put one seed so if you will not provide water to the soil or the seed, the seeds will not germinate because seed needs water for germination. Without water, the seed cannot germinate. Nutrients dissolved in water are transported to each part of the plant. Yes. See, in the water, nutrients are present. So that water is absorbed by the roots and through that, through roots, the, that nutrient will be transported to all the parts of the plant. Water also protects the crops from both frost and hot air currents yes water will protect the plant it will provide protection to the plant from frost and hot air currents also to maintain the moisture of the soil for healthy crop growth fields have to be watered regularly see uh, the that this is also one of the important factor that in the soil moisture should be present and how the moisture can be present in the soil by providing water to the to the plants regularly we have to provide water to the plants regularly then only the moisture content in the soil will be maintained now we have to read about the sources of irrigation so there are many sources of irrigation like wells tube wells ponds lakes rivers dams and canals so there are so many important sources of irrigations are there now we are going to read about the traditional methods of irrigation so there traditional method in traditional method there are many methods uh, which are cheaper but less efficient the various traditional ways are moat that is called pulley system chain pump dhekli and rahat these are the traditional methods which are used for irrigation
now we have will have one look on the pictures of the these traditional methods of irrigation see this is your mood this is your chain pump dekli and rahat now we are going to read about the modern methods of irrigation nowadays these methods are used for irrigation the first one is sprinkler system so modern methods of irrigation help us to use water economically it, if you will use the modern methods of irrigation what will happen water the loss of water or misuse of water will be very less the first one is sprinkler method so this system is more useful on the uneven lands where sufficient water is not available sprinkler is very useful for lawns coffee plantation and several other crops you can see in this picture uh, through this well uh, one pipe like systems are, are arranged in that sprinklers are attached through these sprinklers the water will be provided to the crops so in this very uh, less wastage of water takes place next is drip irrigation so in drip irrigation the water will will be provided to the crops in the form of drip small small drops will be provided in this system the water falls drop by drop directly near the roots so it is called drip system it is the best technique for watering fruit plants gardens and trees water is not washed at all it is a boon in regions where availability of water is poor you can see through this drip irrigation system the water the plants are provided with the uh, drops of water each in the roots Uh, drop by drop waters will be provide water will be provided to the plant now we are going to read about protection from weeds so what are weeds weeds are the unwanted plants which we can see in the crop plants which hamper the growth of the plants right so the undesirable plants which grow naturally along with the other crops are called weeds so this can come for one marks question what are weeds so weeds are unwanted or undesirable plants which grow along with the crops right now the removal of weeds is called what the removal of weeds is called weeding weeding is necessary since weeds compete with the crop plants for water nutrient space and light suppose in one farm crops are also there and in in along with them weeds are also there so what will happen wheat also need water wheat also need sunlight and wheat also need nutrient they will they will provide competition to the plant they will take the nutrient from the soil so what will happen our crops will become weak so it is necessary that from time to time we have to remove the weeds from the crop so that our crops will become healthy they will get proper nutrient proper sunlight as well as proper water tilling before sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of weeds which may then dry up and then mix up with the soil so tilling is one of the technique by which the uh, by which the weeds are uprooted and killed and after that they will mix up with the soil weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicides like 2,4 d this is one of the chemical which used to kill the weeds now the last step which we have to do for our irrigation for our crop protection is harvesting after harvesting we have to read about storage so what is harvesting the cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting yes once the crops are matured the farmers used to cut the crops that process is called harvesting in harvesting crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground it usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crops to mature right so in harvesting what happens uh, mm, in once the crops are matured means generally it takes 3 or 4 months after that the farmers will cut the crops and that process is called harvesting harvesting in our country is either done manually or by sickle or by a machine called harvester it can be done by hands that is called manually manual process or it can be done by sickle or it can be done by a machine called harvester in the har in the harvested crop the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff this process is called threshing see once the crops are harvested the grains are separated from the chaff from the from the waste part so that process is called threshing this is carried out with the help of machine called combine which is in fact harvested as well as thresher right so one machine is used for uh, separating the uh, seeds from the chaff that process and that machine is called combine farmers with small holdings of land do do the separation of grains and chaff by winnowing process so another suppose of farmers they have very small small lands so they don't use so machine and all for that they use that for separating the grains from the chaff they use winnowing process about this winnowing and all you have already read in class 6 
Now the last step which we have to read in crop protection is storage. Once the grains are harvested from the land, they they should be stored properly for longer period of time. So if the if the harvested grains are to be kept for longer time, they should be safe from moisture, insects, rats, and microorganisms. Yes, if we have to store the grains for long period of time, we have to keep them away from moisture insects rats and other microorganism so before storing them the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them this prevents the attack by insects pests bacteria and fungi so once the grains are stored what uh, grains are harvested what we have to do we have to dry them properly in the sunlight and after that we have to store them in the airtight container Prop farmers store grains in jute bags or in metallic bins also means you have seen that many times jute bags are also used for storing the grains and even the metallic bins metallic containers are also used for for storing the grains however large scale storage of grain is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects you can see the picture of silos in this the grains are stored so that we can protect them from the from the insects and the pests now the last topic is strong is food from animals yes you all know that most of the food which we get is from generally we used to get our food from two sources plants and animals so from animals also we get lot of food like uh, eggs chicken milk butter meat etc cheese paneer the uh, those things we get from animals uh, then honey also animals rear at home or in farms have to be provided with proper food shelter and care when this is done on a large scale it is called animal husbandry the so one question can come from here that what is animal husbandry so animal husbandry is a process in which animals are reared and um, for for getting the useful things from them and in and we have to provide food shelter and proper care also to the animals and that process is called animal husbandry so that's all for this lesson i hope you it's clear to you all what we have read in this chapter crop production and management also i'm going to discuss the question answers of this lesson in the next part of the video where you can get all the solutions as well as explanation of the question answers so if you have not watched the part one of this lesson you can watch that i will provide the link in the description box also you can connect me through my facebook page the link i will provide in the description box and if you are new to my channel do subscribe it and don't forget to click on the bell icon so that whenever i will be uploading a new video you will get the notification for that and if this tutorial is helpful for you then please click on the like button and keep motivating me so thank you for watching science learning gateway and do well uh, do your studies properly read read the test book once make your notes so that it will be helpful for you during the exams Thank you.